了。Welcome to Wake the Fuck Up. Is this microphone where it needs to be, Zach? Do you know what you're doing? Yes. Okay. Well, yes, I'm the host of the show. I am the star. The outlaw rock star, Stephen Hensley, my guest this week. J.C. Dykes Jr., Yasha, female demoness, and uh, the psycho Superman, Carl, with his Hannibal Lecter mask. Gentlemen, ma'am, how are we doing today? What's up? What's shaking your world? You're fucking bleeding on my couch. You're bleeding on my goddamn couch. Um, what the fuck is wrong with you? To be safe, I'm not actually bleeding, per se. It's kind of coagulated. It looks like blood. Well, it's coagulated. I can't move my eyebrows. I just got done with a match in Bluefield. Last uh -huh. man standing match with uh, uh, a Puerto Rican named... Alceus Cortez. He used to be Hercules Cortez, mm -hmm. but apparently his grandfather said he can't be Hercules anymore. Really? But yeah, that, this is the product of what Fuck happens you, Zeus. when I decide. <laughs> this is what happens when I decide to bring a barbed wire bat into play, and it gets used on me. Huh? So how long have you been? Have you stopped bleeding? Like how recently were you still feeling the blood drop? When we pulled into your driveway. <laughs> I know. I, I thought you. Were, I thought I saw the glisten in the moonlight. You look like a fucking psychotic. Thank you. Where, where, were you, where were you guys when this was happening? Were you around? She was uh, rock bottom and a little, like, 120-pound girl on a stop sign, and he was in the back getting dressed. Who was the girl? Her name's Nikki. She works with us at WBCW. Well, fuck Nikki. Eat that power bomb. <laughs> I've power drove the poor girl more times than most men in our locker room, so... Yeah, apparently WC, WVCW uh, management decided that me and Caden were banned from ringside. Seems a little, uh, a little biased, doesn't it? You know, was anybody else banned from ringside? Though, let's be fair. No, they tried to get Yasha away, but since uh, Cortez had Nikki out there, uh -huh. I told him, you know, you uh, got trifling. You, yeah, I said you got your trifling bitch. I want my trifling hey, bitch. Hey man, here's the trifling bitches. I guess you guys have somebody toast me. Where's your water bottle? Yeah, that's empty. Somebody have something to drink here. Someone drink with me. Camera, but Scotty? There we go. I love you, buddy. Trifling bitches. Trifling bitches. So what were you guys doing at the show? Uh, we had a tag team title match with JV Insanity and the Mighty Hojo that didn't pan out too well for us. Yeah. Oh, well, Hojo, he's a tough son of a bitch. Yeah, no I've heard shit. stories about him and uh, adult bookstores and... Uh, yeah. Sex objects and taking mofos down. Hey. Yeah, I got busted open in the first lockup of the match. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's silly son of a bitch. I, I feel him. his pain with the Hojo. I had to actually do a program with Hojo about two years ago, uh, and it was all street fights. Mm -hmm. We did an actual street fight in the town of war, and this dumb bastard decides midway through the match to give me an atomic drop on top of fire hydrants. Luckily, I put my hand up before. Oh, luckily, I put my hand down there before I end up getting shish kebab. How'd your hand feel? My hand was sore as fuck, but my nuts and my asshole felt thanked me for it afterwards. I'd say so. You know, violation with a fire hydrant. But I mean, you know, Jenna Jameson might even feel sorry for you. She probably had a fire hydrant in her ass or two. You think? I mean, if not, I mean, she's had Ron Jeremy. That's the closest thing to a damn fire I would hydrant. Watch that video. I'd watch that video. Yeah, exactly. Everybody would watch that video. Know, right. But. uh... One of the matches I did with Hojo at the Princeton Rec Center, I actually beat him by putting a trash bag over his head and suffocating him. So I, I won the WBCW television title with attempted murder. With attempted murder? With attempted murder. Do you murder. feel bad about that? Not at all. I don't I, feel, of course you should. I don't you feel know, bad I about anything. I get tired of these whiny little baby bitch asses. They're like, sportsmanship, play by the rules, be a star. Let me ask you this. What's the point of being a dominant motherfucker if you gotta not be a bully? I, I hate, like pushing people around. I hate the anti-bullying campaign. Oh, I've had screw many that a crap. schools trying to get me to do. Well, come in here and talk about bullying. I was like, I strangled a fucking giant with a trash bag. What the hell am I supposed to tell these kids? Right. You know, fuck like them. I, that's why it amazes me. Like they'll get someone like Randy Orton on there the week after he like kicks his dad in the hand and be like, be a star, don't be a bully. 
like the people that they're really trying to reach are small children. They're like, but you kicked an old man in the head last week. And kids, kids are smarter than people give them credit for. They can spot a hypocrite. Even, I mean, even if we're talking fantasy land here, especially like when you're a kid, you're sold on whatever you see mm -hmm. more than any other time in your life as a wrestling fan. That's when you get hooked normally. I think we ought to do our own bullying campaign and just change the slogan to stand up for yourself, quit being a pussy. You know, kick them Is in the nuts. Accessible? Don't be a pussy. That's that's new camp. Exactly. Hashtag that shit. Quit don't being be a, a trifling bitch. <laughs> quit being a pussy. Well, we have dueling hashtags here, but don't be a bitch. And uh, don't be a pussy. Yeah, trifling bitch. Trifling bitch. Damn trifling bitch. Lots of whatever hashtags you think are appropriate. No go fuck yourself, Steve. Okay? All right. <laughs> Guys, we're going to go ahead and do a commercial break real quick. But before that, we got a tradition on this show. We like to do a shot. And we like to do the shout outs. You guys have anyone you want to shout out? Oh, our big brother Caden, who couldn't be with us for this interview. The nerdy 30 guys who decide that they never want to take my call and they all say they're too fat to be pal drove. Yep. I've suplexed Hojo. I can pal drive you fat bastards. Are you sure about that? I can do it. Yeah, and you know, there's something about a desperate man, though. I feel like he could grab for the ground. And he can grab whatever the fuck he wants. He can grab his own nuts. I'm still going to drop him on his well, head. He grabbed your nuts. He Just can grab my for dear life. I mean, that's a weak point on any man. Let's strategize here. How you protect the ball sack? Hey, I've just been fucking watching them German videos where they staple each other's nut sacks to a fucking step stool, so I'd be all right. Would you staple your nut sack in the morning to get ready for this contest? You never know. You never know what I'll do. What's the craziest thing you've done to get ready for a match? I've dipped myself in honey and set on an anthill. Are you serious? Yes. What I was that? completely fucked up. That was one of the street fights. I just decided to do it. You're insane, you know that, right? I have no shit. Look at my forehead. Touche. Um, I got some shout-outs, too. I want to shout out my boy Jay Bond and everybody over at Blood Bath & Beyond. You know, if you haven't watched their videos on YouTube, look them up. Their reviews are probably the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. Their rating system, the most unique thing you'll ever see. Like them on Facebook. Follow them on Twitter. Uh, watch their stuff. That's all I can say. Uh, Jay Bond, you're the fucking shit. And uh, Stephanie Hensley, homegirl. Just finished up, uh, not by the time this airs, this will be six fucking months later, but uh, just finished up recently filming up in Indiana for Dane Granger, uh, Stephanie Hensley, HM&M Films, Frankie McKay, uh, the nice lady Tracy that I accidentally vomited on. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, thank you guys for a great time, and thank everyone of the fucking uh, wrestling fans as in a fucking pussy. Yeah? Don't be a trifling bitch. Don't be a trifling bitch. Don't be a pussy. Mm. Anybody ever tell you you look like Skinner? I could see that. I need some chow on tobacco. And I know, and a gator foot. Whoa! Welcome back to Wake the Fuck Up, fuckers. Hashtag fucking love for the fuckers. Are you guys going to hashtag this? No. Well, that's, uh, thanks. It's a little disheartening. It is a little disheartening. You know, uh, you know the most popular phrase on the show is dick move, Steve? Dick move, Steve! They, uh, they just have this, uh, guy that sort of did stuff here for a little bit. Craig C.D. Walker, you fucking pussy. Can't show up for anything, so fuck you. Um, but he said it like once or twice, and they use the fucking clip all the time. And, uh, and you know, I don't really care because people seem to like him. They keep watching the show, so the hell do I care? We like the controversy. We like the blood boiling. Let's talk about the blood boiling, guys. Tell me about, uh, tell me about your storied ring careers here. Who's the enemies? Who's, uh, what are the moments that you think have really grabbed a hold of the career you've had on the indie scene? The fans. Uh -huh. So far, like in the past year, I've almost got stabbed four times. Are you shitting me? Like one, for real one, stab, not yeah. like you say this to get like... No, I've actually had knives pulled on me. Why? 
You fuck uh, their mothers? No, blue. Well, I feel like you are a motherfucker. I am a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, Bluefield Mountain Festival last year. Mm-hmm. Pal drove Nikki. The crowd was getting pissed, and there was this girl out in the crowd. She didn't look too bad, but she had a, her family looked like they all had the meth mouth. Yeah, and see that. they were giving me and my I don't know what you'll they see. were giving me and Benny Connolly hell because Benny was tagging with me the entire mm-hmm. weekend, and I was already cranky anyhow. The sun burned. I had a broken tailbone. They'd made me fucking wrestle nine times in two days. I pal drove everybody on the roster. So this girl just keeps talking shit, and Benny looks right at her, and he's like, you got a million-dollar body, but you got a food stamp-looking face. Oh! And then oh! her mom oh! her mom gets pissed. Her mom's like, she gets her smoking hot looks from me. I was like, bitch, the only time you're going to be smoking in hot is when you're cremated. Oh! Go! It goes calm. We get to the back. Everybody's dressing in a tent that they can't get set up properly. And I was like, you know, fuck you guys. I'm going to go get dressed in my car with air conditioning. I'm walking to my car and I hear click and I turn around and there's this dude holding a knife. He goes, you fended my mom and my sister. I said, are they the fucking same person? He goes, no. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you want to do about it? He says, we're going to talk. I said, well, can I put my gear bag in the car? And he goes, sure. And I reach down and pop my trunk and I keep a retractable police baton. With me. Where the uh, fuck do you get that? I mean, I Is keep, that legal? Yeah, fuck if I know. I keep one. But I keep a retractable police baton. I pulled it out, and he's like, what the fuck are you going to do with that? It's the same thing you're going to do with the knife. <laughs> well, at the same time, a paramedic had come through, and at the time, my older brother was on the rescue squad in Princeton, and a bail bondsman in Beckley before he moved. And the paramedic just looked at the guy, and he's like, you might want to put your knife away, because... This guy over here is going to be out of jail for a year out of the hospital. He's going to beat all the shit out of you. So that passed. The guy showed up the next week to Miracle on the Mountain. and Wait, the guy showed up the next week? He showed up the next week. Paid, he paid $30 to show up to sit on the crowd to tell me that I sucked. And I just laughed my ass off at him because he paid 30 bucks to tell me I sucked. And then most recently that I can think of was last week we made our debut for Bruiser Graham, the Bruiser Wrestling Federation in Farmville. And there was this eight-year-old girl in the crowd. And this was Yasha's debut. And this eight-year-old girl stands up in a halter top and Daisy Dukes next to her mom's dressed in the same damn thing. Is, is this girl hot? She's eight. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, there might be, <laughs> cer- there might be certain people that would <laughs> like that Say sort Daisy of thing. Daisy Dukes have certain expectations. <laughs> nah. Okay, okay, hers was like, you know, Daisy Ducks because she was young. <laughs> But can, uh, we, can we make that the new name for like <laughs> the the junior squad? I mean, I called her a prostitute. Prost- I love that a term. So. Like that's wrong. It's so wrong, but it's hilarious. But she not hilarious like the actuality. But, but she know. looks at over at Yasha and she's like, "You're nothing but a fucking bitch." And I'm like, "Really?" Oh. And her mom starts laughing. And the only thing I said to the girl was, "If you don't watch your mouth, we're going to see you on 15 and pregnant." And her mom got pissed. Yeah, she was trying to come over the guardrail, pissed. And I was like, well, you know, fuck it. And a lot of people, oh, you're being stiff. You're being this. You're being, you know what, fuck them. You can't fuck somebody with a limp dick. You got to be a little stiff. Yeah, see? Bunch of trifling bitches. Trifling bitches. All right. Carl, what's your answer here? He says the fans. What What about you? What's the, what's the story for your career? Well, probably our... <laughs> Years, like years and years long feud with the Bunkhouse Boys. Yeah, fuck them fat bastards. Oh, uh, the years and years long. Did you say, wait a second, JC. Do you really do carry this son yeah. of a bitch? Is this, I don't know if this is legal. I have no idea, but this is kind of fucking cool. Yeah, that's my fucking equalizer. That is fucking. <laughs> I don't know no, if I. <laughs> no, no, I didn't even hit myself hard and it feels like shit. Yeah, that's why I carry you it. You could fuck someone up. That's like, yeah, lightweight. Yeah, you fuck. High impact. Fuck a knife. Density. Fuck a knife. I'll beat a motherfucker to death. Uh, but you're saying bunkhouse boys. You're saying fuck the bunkhouse boys. Those fat bats. Is I'll, that legit? I know. Is that legit all the way? I can't have heat with them two because they help train me. Uh, but well, I mean, you can. You but can they legit have love. beat the fucking shit out of both of us. Fuck you. You didn't get hit by a vehicle. Carl got you hit, not by, hit the what? fucking van. Zach, what's the hit rate up for that? Approx. Last time you looked, Scotty or Zach? Seventeen five. Seventeen five. 
17,500. Like, the internet community loves it. Carl, how much did it really hurt, though? The van shot? Just a little... Just... It looked, you know... Honestly, the, the van shot didn't really hurt as much as them getting out and stomping on me as I'm laying on the ground. So did they overdo it for the soft hit with the van? Eh, probably. They're probably compensating, and they're, they're used to that. Okay. Yeah. Who hit you the hardest in the ring ever? Who's the hardest consistently? Not like accidentally clocked me with a chair like way too fucking hard. Should I should I just go ahead and say I'd probably one of them that snuck the hell out of you? I did give you five pal drivers in one match. Well, I'd probably say JC, Hojo. Fuck yeah. Like intentionally. They're intentionally rough. Are you intentionally rough with people? Yeah, that's what I said. You can't fuck somebody with a limp dick. Okay. <laughs> you got to be stiff. All right. Uh, Brian Kyle. I love Brian. You know, like, and we're not friends, but I got a love for him. Like, do you have those guys maybe on the scene you're not close friends with? But as far as, like, the work that you've done together, to a point, I feel like there are people as a commentator. And you can assume I'm insane if I sound insane here. But there's those guys that you call certain things for. And for whatever reason, when they're on consistently, like you have a flow. Like I know you guys have flows in the ring. There are mm -hmm. certain guys I just have a flow when they're in the ring when I'm calling a match. He was one of those guys. Him and Derek, his brother Derek both. Just uh, I, I thought they were really solid performance. And like you said, like I, I thought they looked like they were people. But you're saying like they're, oh yeah, that's legit. Uh, especially Brian. Dynamite. De Derek, he was. Like Derek was a little that. softer. Brian was. Brian was the hard hitter. He was the heavy hitter. <laughs> and usually, the way it went in the tag matches was Carl was kind of a kind soul back then, so he would take uh, the you punishment. You were a kind soul. That, I mean, you, you gotta look. He's got. He's got that fucking coconut on him that you you can break walnuts. Are you rougher with. now? Are you more aggressive? Oh yeah. Because I mean, you were always the nicest guy. You're like one of the. Uh, you're one of the most humble guys I think I've ever known from a from a backstage standpoint. You don't have a hot head. You won't say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. You're very much for the show. But uh, are, you're aggressive now. Has that changed? Are you are you now Are you more of a dick like, you know, I'm not going to do that? Well, are you that guy now? Well, a couple of weeks ago I did end up goring the shit out of Nikki. Like uh, yeah. we were, he was talking about power driver. I gored the fuck out of that girl. <laughs> You know. That and our Virginia Sometimes, debut. Sometimes uh, you gotta put, you gotta put them in their place, you know. Oh yeah, and then uh, our, our Virginia debut is the psycho sadistic team with BWF. I kind of put J Money through the ring with a spine buster. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I I popped big for that. I was like, oh shit! I think the ring just collapsed because he just picked that little guy up and just slammed the fuck out of him. All right. I like that. Let me, you know, for some reason this conjured up an old Hensley family story here, you know. People are big on the anti-violence women. I'm down with that. You know, you hit a woman, fuck you. But my Uncle Tommy, he he fought in the WW2, so he's filled with great stories. The man was evidently, at least as far as he was willing to tell me, a Lothario with the ladies. And he'd show me his photo album and be like, this is my Japanese baby doll. This is my Australian baby doll. This is my English baby doll. This is my Welsh baby doll. And he'd be like, this is my German baby doll. And then he kind of looked off for a second. He's like, when I was in Germany, I had another baby doll. But let me tell you, I came in one night and that girl was trying to kill another man. And then she tried to kill me. So I threw out a window. I was like, what? He's like, well, she's going to fight like a man. She's going to die like a man. I was like. I don't know what to say right now. You're crazy. You're absolutely insane. I've done Mick or Ben. I love that man. Whitaky. I've done intergender matches with Nikki where the way Hojo put it, and it was wrong as fuck when he said it was I got her up for a power driver, she kicked me between the eyes, she uh -huh. locked me in a triangle choke, I get backstage and Hojo goes, That was some sexual geometry. I said, What mm. the fuck are you talking about? He said, Well she had you in a triangle near her box. But that's Hojo for you. But my whole thing is with me training Nikki, me training Yasha, I've told them both, if you're going, like you just said, if you're going to fight like a man, you're going to fight like a man. You get in the ring. I mean, you're going to put yourself there. You got to put man, yourself there. I, that brings us to you, Yasha. What do you say, Yasha? Somebody pass off to Yash. Can I call you Yash for sure? Is that okay? Sure. All right, Yash. What up, girl? How are you? Tell me how you came into this fold of psychopaths, this bleeding man, this... uh. This mask wearing weird ass fuck, <laughs> Carl. You're so weird. You're such a weird guy. I got a mask too, but I just don't feel like wearing it with all this blood. Can, well, can you guys wear it while she talks? Yeah, we'll wear it. Let's 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 get the image out there. Yeah. 
I like the full package here. <laughs> now they're like your silent servants. Yeah. Are, are they like ever that. like that for you? Do you ever feel like that? Are you like at the helm of this? Do you look, whisper in their ears? What's the story here? How'd you come into this? Well, I started out as an innocent fan. Uh-huh. Minding my own business, sitting there, mm -hmm. watching his match. Mm -hmm. He gored Nikki, of course. Yeah. Sitting yeah. there. Oh, my God. Fight like man, die like man. Oh, my God. Why did you do that? Then he grabs me by my hair. We go back to the compound for weeks upon weeks. Nobody there to help me. I mean, so wait, he kidnapped you. Yeah, well, you kidnapped her. Nod, don't answer. Nod. He, yeah, you could say he kidnapped me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He kidnapped you. Um, you know, it's illegal. At the compound, wrestling, we, the wrestlers get a buy on the illegal. They, they get a pass. They get a pass. Everybody gets one. Everyone's a mark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she does whatever a spider can and more. A spider demon. Spider demon. Like so she kidnaps you, he brainwashes you. Tell me about the brainwashing pro process. I'm, I'm you know, not you watch, you watch violent, yeah. bleeding wrestling matches. You watch like, well, like a lot of uh, a lot of anti-loving hippie, hating bullcrap. I, I wouldn't say I was brainwashed. I was uh -huh. shown the light. Okay. He helped you were me. Empowered. You felt he empowered. helped me see. What was really going on? Kind of like the un inner dominatrix with the, uh, you know, it's, this is almost, I mean, I don't want to say anything, but I mean, this looks, you got a couple of chains and whips here. You guys got a sex tape. No. 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 Okay. So they brainwash you. They helped me see the light. They helped you see the light. Brainwashing is a bad word. Makes well, it sound sure like... in front of the uh, the brainwashed. But... Oh, okay, okay. You know, back to what happened. I, I saw the light. You know, I had Hercules, Achilles, Akavado, whatever mm -hmm. he is. We, he changes his name every week. Seems Akavata. like, yeah. Um, he 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 had every moment to save me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was there. Mm -hmm. You know, take these no, two guys out and you know, help me. Never. Never. Always with Nikki. I'm always with Nikki. I'm like, what's so Tricky special about Nikki. her? Yeah. Tricky Nikki. Never trust Tricky Nikki. She's a, what is it, darling Nikki? Darling. Trifling so, bitch. Sounds a little not so darling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, I saw the light. And you saw the light. And th these guys. And baptized. These guys are my brothers. The fire in their touch and the flame in their eyes. You know, family that slays together, stays together. You're born to love again. You're a brand new woman. Oh, yeah. I, I I know what I want now. I know what you want. You know what you need. Yes. All right. So let's bring it here and now. Like when you're out there, tell me about tonight when you, when you and Nikki were out there. What's the moment like for you? That sweet exacting revenge with dear darling Nikki. The best moment, uh -huh. she gets in the ring mm -hmm. trying to interfere mm -hmm. in his match. Uh -huh. Not having that. Uh -huh. She's not going to mess with my brother. Uh-huh. I grab her, uh -huh. you know, slam her down on the stop sign. You know, Stupid stop. Bitch. Trifling bitch. Trifling bitch. Best moment ever. Best moment ever. Then. I'll drink to that. Then the bitch rakes me in the eyes and throws me out the ring. Mm. I, I could have broke my hip. I mean, to I'm be young. Fair, I applaud. You got to at least applaud that. That's at least this aggression. That's being alive. The rake of the eyes, the pull of that. Come on. We love that shit. Let's not yeah, kid. Yeah, but that's a. Cop out. If you if you rake the eyes, come you know, on. Let's yeah, come on. It's not a cop out. I love when people cheat. Yeah. Don't you love when people cheat? Don't you love when you cheat? Oh. Ah. I don't like when you do it to me. But see, that just shows she's weak. All I'm thinking here is she tried to play our game and you won. Mm. Cause who's standing tall at the end? Well, that God that's damn. besides the point. What the fuck, man? Hey, guys, we're going to have to take a commercial break real quick. That fucking shit. That kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's whiskey. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let's go. All right, we're back to uh, wake the fuck up. Outlaw rocks are in the house. These fucking madmen. This mad demon woman. This mad spider demon woman. You fucking suck. Fuck, my eye still hurts. 
What did we tell you earlier? Don't be a trifling bitch. I want to be a trifling bitch. Hashtag don't be a pussy. You laid a point. We got... What Carl you just said. Understand. We get hot-headed. Hey, I just poked you now. I didn't hit you with a van. Well, you know, fuck a van. <laughs> fuck a van. Volkswagen. I don't want that shit. Mm. Mm. Can we hit him with your Volkswagen? We can run him over with it. It'll be like speed bump. Speed bump? Yeah. Like All right. Beep, beep. Let's let's uh, let's talk party time, guys. You know, we uh, gotta get the party <laughs> stories in here. This is our show. Let's talk about some party stories. Tell us about the road. Tell us about the parties. Tell us about the life. Tell us about the ladies, the rats, the weird ass fuck. Shit Until I got recently had to take a bunch of medication mm-hmm. from stomach problems. I was notorious for setting up birthday parties just for random reasons. Hey, we need to have a party the night before TV so I can get shit faced and play music for everybody because I play guitar. Mm-hmm. Well, the first time, I'm granted I've been his brother for an entire lifetime. The first time we actually partied was in December for the WBCW Christmas party. Well, Carl tells me before he gets there, he's like, I don't do mixed drinks, I don't drink beer, I, I do shots. Well, I was having a girl pour him like shots inside of rock glasses, and he was downing crown maple, uh, just whatever the fuck she'd give him. You got to do what you do, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we get back to the room, and <laughs> we lose her. Now, she wasn't lost when we found her. She I told us she knew where she was. I remember I left my wife in the bed to go find her, said, we'll be back in 15 minutes. Two and a half hours later, we're walking back in the room because we found her at the Nerdy 30s room, Matt Klein's room. Oh! Part, not like that. She was just visiting. Ow! Yeah, okay. But I get in, and they decide to have me pull my guitar out and play for two and a half hours. <laughs> like did drunk and karaoke. All right. But before that, I couldn't find Carl. <laughs> and then I find Carl in the weight room. Drunk off his ass in his pajamas, screaming, I'm fucking Lex Luger. I'm fucking Lex Luger while he's pumping iron. <laughs> I said, come what on. Are you doing? I said, we Wait, got... Are you weightlifting while you're drunk? Yeah. You're weightlifting, saying, I'm Lex Luger. Yeah. I'm Lex Luger. I'm Lex Luger. I was the fucking total package in that motherfucker. And then I said... <laughs> were, you, were you listening to music? How'd you get in this mode? Tell me how you went to Mad Men. We, we were walking down the hallway, and I just got distracted. He just Well, the be I... safe is I had a buddy at... Uh, at Charleston Flea Market, where I actually have my store, cheap plug there. But uh, the guy gave me, like, two jugs. One of them, or my brother gave me one. One of them was apple pie moonshine. Uh-huh. She brought some apple pie moonshine. And then I had lemonade-flavored moonshine. Well, Carl was double-fisting them before we went downstairs, <laughs> plus everything he drank in the bar. So I had to get Lex Luger out of the weight room. We decided to go outside in our pajamas, and it's fucking 20 degrees out there. And I said, we got to find Ashley. It's a mystery where she's at. And all I hear is, mystery, I'm scrappy dude now. He takes off running. <laughs> Drunk off his ass at the Quality Inn. And, and then we go to the th- Nerdy 30s room. And the first thing they do is Tony Reif looks at me and goes, you want some Jaeger? I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah, dude. How the far fuck out are you guys for this? We were pretty far out. <laughs> That sounds wondrous. Those well, sounds like a good fucking when time. we start drinking at five thirty in the evening, because we said fuck everybody, mm-hmm. and then the waiter, or the, the bartender at Kelsey's Lounge walks up and says, "Can y'all please quit drinking while I go to the liquor store? I'm dry. I drank two fifths of Jaeger in about four hours." Do you really like that shit? I love it. Like Jaeger's, I, I love you know, it. Like, I mean, I'll drink it because I'll drink anything, and Jaeger bombs are just, for some reason, what people buy people at bars now. My problem is, if you mix it with Dr. Pepper or Coke, you don't taste Jaeger, and that's why I can drink two fists, and then my insides decide to turn to liquid shit. You'd be drunk with me right now. I'd probably be falling on your coffee table right now, because I'm not really supposed to be drinking with all the medication. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I can't operate a forklift when I'm fucked up. But anyhow, they give you any alternatives, you know, man. The man's got to blow off some steam. I got Zoloft, shit Zoloft. tons of Zoloft. Zoloft's what's keeping Zoloft me from. Sound fun. It's keeping me from burning my fucking workplace down. I mean, that is that's something, right? But we get back to the room, and I learned two things that night. Carl's an inventive motherfucker. Whenever he is drunk, mm-hmm. and I cannot moonsault. I attempted a moonsault off the bed to the floor. I landed on my fucking head on top of car. Wait, we actually learned three things. <laughs> we, we also learned that night that neither one of us is the Shawn Michaels of the team. Nah. So you're both the genetic? <laughs> yeah, we're both genetic. Actually, I think we're Leaf Cassidy, of, but that's beyond it. 
But anyhow, we're laying in the floor drunk because, fuck it, we can't get up. Uh-huh. And Carl goes, you know it would be a cool finish? I was like, what? He goes, you ought to fucking pile drive me on top of people. He goes, for, I hate to say this. I, I need to interject this random, like, drunk man thought. But for some reason, every time you guys say pile drive, all I can think of is a sexual position. <laughs> Like, every time you told a story, all I can think of is a sexual I, I love him to death, but that's not happening. <laughs> no, I, no. But no, we, we decided on it, and it <laughs> it got a big Trump pop me. at TV. And we've been doing it ever since. And then uh, your favorite paraplegic, quadriplegic. Uh, oh, Birch? Yeah, Bird, I love Birch. Birds named it. You know, you got to give that guy credit for all the shit that he has uh, in life that people will consider, like, trouble. He's uh he's fucking active. He still does. What going he does. back to the stabbing awesome stories, going back to the stabbing stories. Did I he try to stab you? No, but uh, at the Elks Club show they do every year, I threw I'm powder. Just picturing Tony like driving his wheelchair at you with a knife taped to the end of it. That's like some jousting Fuck type you, shit. You, JC. Fuck you. Fuck you. But see, we uh at the camp show one year for the 4-H campers up there. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be part of a match, big time. And I, I, me and Anthony are like this. We talk every day. And he kept saying, what can we do? And I said, I got it. Well, he didn't bother cluing his own sister, who's a camp counselor up there, what that he was going to be involved in a match. And I threw baby powder in his eyes, and he started steering into the crowd, running people over because he was blind. <laughs> I had my gear bag was picked up and threw out onto a field and I was told I was no longer allowed at the 4-H camp for assaulting a camper. What? The, the counselors were ready to kill me <laughs> because I threw powder in a disabled gentleman's eyes. Did you kayfabe it? Oh, yeah. I kayfabe the hell out of it, man. But, Holy uh, shit. Speaking of birds, <laughs> I was telling Birds about the TV that weekend because he, he can't come down much. And I said, yeah. And I said, I fucking pal drove Carl on top of Daniel Halen. He goes, what y'all's gimmick? I said, well, I'm the suplex sadist, and he's psycho Superman. We're psycho sadistic. He's like, so he's psycho. I'm like, yeah. He goes, call it the psycho sacrifice. I was like, I could see that. Okay. Because I'm literally pal driving my little brother with his caveman head on top of people's stomachs mm-hmm. to the point that Hercules Cortez was spitting up blood for six weeks afterwards. Well, fuck a bunch of Cortez. Yeah, fuck him. Trifling yeah. bitch. Trifling bitch. And the fact that it was over with Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. Well, he's not a trio. Uh, well, apparently Al-Qaeda his grandfather. Something like that. His grandfather said he couldn't use the Hercules name no more. That the Hercules name is passed down to you from the elders. So he, instead of like changing his name to something that sounded more Puerto Rican, he changed it to like Alceus. Alceus Cortez. Okay. That just sounds like, I, I don't know, I can't pronounce it half the time. I've called him Alka-Seltzer, Alkaline, Alcatraz. Mm-hmm. But his grandfather was actually a very famous wrestler named uh, Hercules Ayala. Okay. And the WW, WWF. But I just, like, well, the one of the last matches we did, not the last man standing, but the the leather strap match, we were connected wrist to wrist with a 10-foot leather strap a couple weeks ago in Princeton. And I'm whipping him and telling him, you know, I'm going to treat you like a cue ball. The harder I hit, the more English I get. Just being a racist prick against the Puerto Rican people. And this dude in the front row speaking Spanish to us. against the Puerto Rican people. The Puerto Rican people are very noble people. They make a very fine cigar. But I support everyone everywhere for every I nationality. Think you're, I think you're thinking of Cubans. Cuban, we support the Cuban people. But um, the Cuban cigars and their manufacturers. There was their a, children, their elders, and all their loved ones. There was a nice guy in the crowd who was of Hispanic descent. Start we support Hispanics, too. Start speaking Spanish. Start speaking Spanish to Herc, and Herc looks right at him and goes, I don't know what he's saying. I was like, well, you're a piss poor Puerto Rican then. And he goes, huh? I was like, I can understand him. He goes, what's he saying? I said, he said he's going to call INS. We're going to float you back on a car hood. Holy shit. Why I didn't get stabbed then is amazing, too. I have too. no idea. Hey, guys, we're going to do a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to see if we can make this even more crazy. We're going to kick it up a notch. Oh, Lord. Hey, Carl, I got a question for you about Boogie when we come back. When we're back. For Steve, collecting debts was a quick paycheck. Get fucked, dickhead! 
until they pushed him too far. Check is in the mail. Your head's in the mail. Steve didn't pay the power. Steve will masturbate in your shower. Steve! Man, I totally should have bought that Coleco Vision. <laughs> well, you can. Put it on the card. See ya. Bye. You want to charge it to the card? Steve charges you with a knife. Steve, don't pay your mortgage. He'll put you in the mug. You're gonna die. Steve, dead. Please don't kill me. Every time the holiday season comes around, so does my urge to kill. Caesar, do you think you can loosen up a little bit? Y you know, have a little bit of fun with the lines? Don't tell me to say the lines. It sickens me. So you got a roll for me? What about playing Santa Claus? <laughs> you know about Santa Claus, boy? He brings presents to them that's been good, but to them that's been bad. You know what he does? <laughs> There's this girl. Allison Platt, and I just can't get her out of my head. This is just mommy's friend, Otto. Nice to meet you, Bobby. Oh! Caesar, I know what I gotta do. I gotta play Santa Claus. Well, that is just sad. All right, so how much should we get paid here? Oh, uh, Demian. Yeah. Who is that? Just our janitor. Some people find him a bit strange. He was diagnosed with a Santa somatic dissociative disorder. Caesar and Otto. Who would you kill? Just had it reattached! Oh, 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 oh. Sacrifice is sacred. That sounds a bit extreme. He's also afraid of Santa Claus. <laughs> yourself a very Merry Christmas. Technically, it's called Christmas, Dr. Allen. Sorry, Heather, there won't be nudity in this film. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Alright, welcome back to Wake the Fuck Up. I said a uh, boogie question for Carl. Carl, I want to ask you here. I've heard a, lo a story backstage for a, a while there. One of those stories that's kind of whispered from place to place, like elder to young person down on the line. Now, I heard a story about uh, a couple gentlemen walking in on Boogie masturbating under a glass table while a woman's shitting over top of it. Is this guy really a fecal phobe? Is this true? Uh, that's, as far as uh, I not know... Not a fecal phobe, but a fecal whatever it is? A uh, well, Freak. Is as far as I know, it's true. I mean, if you do, can believe what Ricky Morton says, I mean... <laughs> I, I, Ricky's a good, pretty trustworthy guy sometimes. So you know, if Ricky Morton says it's true, it's probably true. And you now got, you trained under Boogie, though. Is, do you have any inclination that this would be true, like from the person you know, uh, or is this just? I mean, it's it's not unusual for people to be completely different in the bedroom than they are in person. Well, when I first met Boogie, it was oh, like. <laughs> When I first met Boogie, it was a very different experience. You know, it just you know, it was just almost like a grandpa almost. He just you know invited me in. You know, took, started taking my money. Then when I started getting more in the business, he started showing his true side and telling these crazy ass stories. Man, he just Boogie's a character. That's for damn sure. That's awesome. Does anybody else have any boogie stories? Yeah, this one was passed down to me from Frank the Tank Parker, one of my idols. Okay. The Tank. Frank and I think Scotty Rocker, maybe Scotty Rains, there's a whole bunch of them just go on a road trip. And Boogie was married to Angel, of course, at the time. And he told him, guys, go out and do whatever you want. I'm going to hang out here. And they called and said, Boogie, we're bringing some girls back. We're bringing some Rizats. We're bring some rats back to the locker room. We're back to the locker room. Fuck. Back to the hotel Have room. Have you guys ever engaged in rats yourself? We'll be in that in a minute. But he, uh, Boogie wanted to play a good rib, so he goes in the bathroom and he takes a hand towel. And Boogie, there's a reason the man is wearing long tights. The dude has got, like, mushroom-shaped uh, bruises on his knees because he's apparently hung like a sop with camel. So Boogie decides to cover his midsection with a hand towel, so it looked like a lampshade with a chain hanging down. Mm -hmm. And he puts his hair up in a towel and rolls it up, and he's looking around, and he goes, there we go. 
and he he finds his his rib he finds his gimmick and he walks out and all the girls are because you know here's this old man with you know come to papa tattooed across his stomach and mama tattooed to his knuckles and he's got his hair up in this bun got his beard down he's hi ah, boys it's nice to see and he's doing the boogie shuffle clapping his hands and all that and he says frank he said, weirdest thing, he said, I unpacked my bag on the toilet seat before I took a shower and I sat down, and now I can't find my toothbrush. And Frank goes, you can't find your toothbrush? Boogie goes, it was right there, it's purple, I know exactly where I put it, I was going to brush my teeth, my pearly whites, and I cannot find my toothbrush. And he drops the towel, and all the girls, oh, and he goes, oh, let me get my, he bends over right in front of him. And when Boogie bends over, there's a purple toothbrush sticking out of his asshole. And they go, and he goes, what? And he reaches back and he pulls it out and goes, oh, there's my toothbrush. <laughs> Needless to say, so the rats left. Oh. <laughs> they did not stick around, and they never told Boogie what they were doing ever. They got separate hotel rooms. But they, <laughs> they, they had a good laugh that night, but yeah, Boogie stuck a toothbrush in his ass. All right, let's hear your all's rat stories. I've been known to uh, be managed by a rat in the past. Uh -huh. I mean, you remember Ducky? Uh, the ducky, oh, the ducky, the ducky. I had a manager that was more plastic than ducky. Okay. And my time. yeah, uh, no, no, this was after I left mountain state and, oh, uh, sorry. the, the promoter that booked me wanted to use this broad and the only way she would work is if she managed me, which was God awful, like horrible. I mean, she had a nice rack on her. That's about it. But I mean, she was dead from the. Board, huh? She was dead from the neck up. I mean, it was mostly just used for cobwebs and storage space. But really, that's one of the only rat stories I got. I got a couple rats that have tried, but I got a a bitch of a wife right now that would rip their head off. That's more mean than her. Really? And a sick and a six year old. Yasha? That, Yasha, are you but mean? I'll pass. Y Wait, Yasha, have you thrown now with a bitch before? Hold on. You tell your rat stories, because you hung out with some rats. God. I used to be friends with a corner of rats, uh -huh. and... Were you a rat? Fuck no. Okay. Okay. That, you know, I understand rats exist. Uh-huh. And being female, coming into the wrestling business, you automatically get pegged as a rat. Uh-huh. And you have to prove yourself to... Show that you're not a rat. I'm not going to be a fucking rat for okay. nobody. So what happens with you and the rats? What, what's your pivotal moment here? They, they don't mess with me. They don't? No. Have you had to have a confrontation with one before? Maybe one stepping in your territory? Not really, no. but... Do you intimidate the fuck out of them? Is that it? They yeah. They kind of look your way and you're like, you fucking cunt. Yeah. I will see you next Tuesday in the hospital. One of the rats don't even come to the show no more. Oh, fuck her. Right? She's gonna. I've spider and Johnny and, uh, she, she's. Frank I've heard spiders big into the rats. Is there any well, truth in spider? Spider fucking loves the rats. Do we have any spider rat stories? Oh, spider okay. rat. Well, Carl, I gotta cut you off. Yeah, uh, you know why you got the name Spider, right? Come right back. You, you know why you, he's got the name Spider? You don't have any. Okay. Well, we'll hop back over here for the rat stories. Spider has a tattoo on a certain part of his body. Is why he's named Spider, and it is a spider. Uh huh. Yeah. But yeah, that's actually one of his only demands to be booked is you got to have rats there for him. Really? Yes. He's not going to come to the show then now. His rat's gone. Well, we can get him other well, now rats. Now he's got free advertising. <laughs> if you're a rat and you want to fuck, come to one of Spider Crowley's show. Suck that motherfucker's dick. He's going to show up. Is that is that pretty much the lump? If song? you like spiders, well, he's be got one on. By me saying that, we say yes. Shit, he'd yes. Pull, he'd he'd love it. Spider, we're going to get you laid, buddy. We're going to get get spider laid. Hashtag that shit. All right. Now, guys, is there anyone in the business that's uh, that's crazier than uh, than the stories we've heard about Boogie that you've ran across that you know to be true? I'm trying to think if there's anybody I've met that's I know more... you guys sort of mentioned loosely. I heard Gypsy Joe's name come up. Gypsy's fucking nuts. My, uh, my I... best Gypsy story, it's not even him in the ring. It's him in the nursing home. Okay. Is he in the nursing home now? He's in a nursing home in uh, Smyrna, Tennessee. Okay. He uh, had his leg amputated for uh, gout. That's uh -huh. why he actually quit wrestling. I don't know his actual age because 
Gypsy always told me he was 79 years old, but he told me he was 79 years old for seven years straight. Probably not 79. But uh, some friends, uh, Woofy D from PG-13, they went down to visit him to get him to do a uh, couple promos for Woofy D's upcoming DVD project. And they walk into Joe's room, and of course he's laying there, and it smells like Smiths because you're not going to stop Gypsy Joe from smoking and they're like, Gyps, you know, what's going on? They're like, why are you in a room by yourself? He said, I had a fucking roommate. He said, dude, whined all the fucking time. He said, guy was hitting the gimmick button the other night. The nurse never came. Motherfucker died. <laughs> said, Gypsy, why didn't you help him? He said, I got one fucking leg. Fuck that motherfucker. It's like, okay. Jesus. Yeah. All right, Carl. Hard, you want to tell the false view Gypsy Joe's rat story? I was thinking more along the lines of the Williamsburg story. Oh God! Which one's better? Both of them's ass. Before well, both of them. Before them, hey, for both? before them two, Hojo told me that Gypsy used to get people to come to Whitesville by wearing Daisy Dukes and letting his dick stick out, and he would walk up and down the streets of Whitesville, West Virginia, going wrestling, wrestling, come see the snake, wrestling, wrestling, come see the snake. No shit. But Carl, go ahead. All right, this is Williamsburg, West Virginia. <laughs> One of the funniest things I ever saw in my life, all right? We're sitting up, we're all sitting there in the bag. Joe's about to go out to the ring. He just, his interest music time was Wanted Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi. His music starts, kicks on. Nobody knows where Gypsy's at. He's gone. Like, the music's halfway through, and we're like, we're sitting there thinking that he died somewhere because the motherfucker was old. <laughs> The music ends and loops through again. Something wrong with you. Gypsy Mom, comes from the crowd. And all he did was wrestle in a pair of jeans at the time anyway. He comes from the crowd with toilet paper on his ankle saying, I had to take a shit, sorry. Yeah, you're sh- <laughs> I was going to say you're shitty. Yeah, he pops out the exact, the exact opposite of the thing. Looks at him and goes, I'm here. Cut the music. I was taking a shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tell the Falls view one. All right. This Falls view. All of a sudden, we're all in the back. Me, Eric Brooks, JC are all sitting around talking. All of a sudden, Gypsy just stands up out of nowhere and just goes, I'm going to go get some pussy. <laughs> he leaves the oh, locker. Shit. Leaves the locker room, goes out to the crowd, starts talking to girls. What? Yeah. He's laying his Mac down? Yeah. He comes back about a half hour later and goes, I got some pussy. No, we looked at him and said, Joe, you're back. I said, how was it? He goes, I ain't dead yet. Wait, what's the pussy look like? I don't know, but there were several girls in our crowd that night in Fallsview that were walking funny that I think they got a hold of the Joe stick. You're serious? Yes. Like, even at that age? I mean, even though 79 I... 79 pr- for the 16th year? I figured when he ejaculates, <laughs> either a flag comes out or dust. Like, Poof. But <laughs> I'm, I'm not shitting you. That man, he got laid more than a chicken. He himself. And then after yeah, after all that happened, the next thing you know, he's laying down on the table going, I'm going to sleep. Fuck all you guys. Yep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's Crazy fantastic. old bastard. <laughs> that would be a hell of a, a guest, would be Gypsy. Can we, I would say impossible. That would be cool. Is he crazy enough to do this? Oh, he's fucking nuts. Can he do this from the nursing home? He, he, you think they're going to stop that motherfucker? Probably the worst not. thing I ever did was give Anyone Gypsy a wood chisel. Hold of I will get you his information. We should see if this is a possibility. That can be absolutely intriguing on a million levels. I bet he's got some stories. Oh, God, yeah. Right. He was the very first man Just to jump off the top New of Jack. a cage. Uh, front two, do what? He, jumped, uh, he was the very first the man, first man to jump off the top of a cage in Japan back in the 60s. That's crazy. But Fuck, I want him on the show now. Don't mention New Jack when he comes. God, no. Does he hate New Jack? Oh, God, yes. Well, give me some good, like, sound bites. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, fucking old Jack and new Jack, a skinny Jack. Yeah, he hates new Jack. Okay. Fair enough. Well, let's, we'll, we'll put some feeders out into the universe and see what happens with this. We're going to go to commercial. We're going to come back up on this son of a bitch and uh, wrap this thing up in a second. Like the condom that we have Gypsy Joe used to protect himself from STDs.
free Charles Thomas brought to you by general substances. If it's composed of matter, we have a hand or two in it. short films and weird stuff it's radio free charleston welcome back to wake the fuck up and unfortunately all good things must come to an end i swear to god i feel like you guys got a thousand more stories than you we've been toying with the idea of doing a podcast eventually if we do a podcast you guys come back damn skippy more stuff with us we'll have more leniency um real quick before we get out of this thing though Tell us about your store, brother. I have a. Uh, I want to plug it all. Capital Flea Market. We're usually open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, most times, like nine to four, or whenever I get bored and decide to fucking leave. But it's the WBCW Academy store. Most of the proceeds are going to help fund the academy when it's up and running that she trained through, that I've trained many through. But we have not only standard wrestling stuff that you can find in Walmart. I have stuff that you cannot find in Walmart. I have daggers and railroad spikes signed by Kevin Sullivan. I have magazines signed by Bobby cool. Fulton, by Greg DeHammer Valentine. Bobby Fulton? Yeah, oh, he's nice. been, he's come to my store just to hang out. Really? Uh, we got autographed You're pictures. Legit. We got autographed figurines. We got VHS out the ass. DVDs on sale. You never know who's going to stop by. We got gear that we sell. We make boot laces. Pretty much, if it's something wrestling related, we have it. And if we don't have it, I can damn sure get it. I got a little, you can ask Carl, he's worked in there for me a little bit here and there. You guys got anywhere on the internet, people? Uh, if you go to Facebook, I'm not for sure the entire URL, but if you look up the WVCW Academy Store, mm-hmm. we post all the time. We have sales all the time. I mean, you can come buy DVDs off of us for three bucks a piece. Doesn't matter if it's one, three, five, or ten discs. We sell them to you for three bucks. Rock on. Uh, we have parents that just drop their kids off to us because we have a, a TV set up where we watch nothing but wrestling all day long. You know, I think the big get though is, the, like you said earlier, the unique memorabilia things, mm-hmm. like the railroad spikes, the yeah. giant merchandise, the stuff you're not necessarily going to find just going to a store, even necessarily yep. to eBay. I mean, the, the sign spikes, I've never heard of anybody having those. That's kind of cool. Um, is there anyone you guys want to give your love out to or anything you guys, uh, and this is going to be ways out, want to plug before we jump off here? Damn it, promoters, book us. If you want a heel tag team that'll get heat, if you want guys that will legit have people saying, I want to stab them two motherfuckers and that yes, trifling sir. painted up bitch that's with them, Damn right. book us. Mm-hmm. We're not going to baby, you know, pussyfoot around. We're Fuck not going to baby it up. Hell no. We're psycho sadistic. Psycho. I pal drive my own partner on people. I will yell at kids. I will he smack babies. Fuck. I do not give a fuck. If fuck you that want baby. a if you want a true heel tag team. He doesn't care. Book us. He'll kill your mother. I might if you book me to do it. With a trash bag for the title. You damn skippy. If the title's on the line, he'll do anything. I'll rake a I'll rake a host eyes. You've seen that. So book us. He'll rake a rake across a rake's eyes. I'll rake a rake. I'll poke a rake in that size. Yes, sir. Trifling bitches. They'll poke your mom. And also, don't be a pussy. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for yourself. Here, here. We'll see you next time. Wake the fuck up. Until then, I'm the outlaw rock star. These guys are crazy as fuck. Do the laugh, girl. And just... (laughs) Uh, All I can think of is when you pull the cord at the beginning of the old Mountain State intro. Ah, shit. I'll see you next time. Yasha. That'll teach you to beat up! Get it! Get it! Get it! You think you get that hot spot? You think you get that hot We're gonna put you out, boy! You're out of here! Johnny Blast. Johnny Blast. You wanna face me tonight? And you want to face me in a non-title match? Well, here's the thing I don't understand, Johnny. Last time we were in the ring together, I left you laying in a puddle of your own blood. Yeah, this right here, Carl. Carl's all excited about that show, aren't you? Yeah. 
Well, we tell them what you want to go do at that show. I'm going to hurt the Bunkhouse Boys! Why do you want to hurt the Bunkhouse Boys? Because they hurt us! Why'd they hurt us? <laughs> Did you see what the Bunkhouse Boys did to Ducky? You think Ducky liked intensive care at the animal hospital? You think my stick like didn't work over my head? I want to know something, Bunkhouse Boys. What is y'all's demented thing but Santa Claus? I mean, look. First you attack the man, then you attack the book. Is it a deep-seated hatred? I know, Bandit, you didn't get that moonshine still when you were six. And Big Willie, we can always tell that you never got that elliptical machine. And Tony Richards, I know you were a part of it. And it's not my fault you got the knockoff Tolly Blanchard robe and not the Ric Flair when you really want it. I don't even want to get started on Scotty Rocker and all that makeup and everything. All I'm asking for a fair shot for me and my brother. Ain't that right? Say hi to Jock. Hi, Jock. Now, come on. Hi, Jock.